Hi, this is Steve Garland, head wrestling coach at the University of Virginia, giving my weekly video newsletter. Uh, you might notice that Keith Gavin is not with us today. My, my trusty assistant coach, uh, Keith, we were gonna, we've, been, we've been putting him in the videos, and you know, I wanted to admit, today's more of a serious message, and I'm going to get to that in a second, but I want, certainly wanted to make it clear that, you know, it's, it's, obviously last week was a joke. It was, you know, Keith is actually extremely intelligent. He's a very pragmatic guy. He's... He's a guy that brings a lot to the table, and we just thought it was funny because he is a little bit more reserved and a lot more quiet than me that we could we could have him in on those videos as a guy that stands there as as my henchman, you know. Uh, so for those who didn't get the joke, that's what was going on. But this week's a little bit more serious, so we wanted to uh, leave Keith out, but we're going to bring him back next week. You know, Keith's going to be a staple in these videos moving forward for a lot of reasons. But uh, yeah, the, the, the message I want to share with you guys today, um, I, I really want to share a cool opportunity I had recently, and hopefully this will make sense towards the end. I had the opportunity to speak in front of the VAF board, the Virginia Athletics Foundation board. And everybody, I hope, knows that the Virginia Athletics Foundation raises the money that we use for our program and also uh, raised all the money for the scholarship bill. They raised the money for the academic support and athlete-only dining hall. All the support systems that we enjoy here, that our student-athletes enjoy here, uh, is provided by the work of the VAF and their and their people, and so it's an amazing organization that works for a the athletic department, and we owe them a lot, and, and as, you know, not the least of which our gratitude. And so, uh, I, I was just so thrilled that they allowed me to be able to speak there. And when I got there, there was other coaches there, and what they were doing was talking about their programs and sort of you know highlighting this this person and this athlete and. I kind of I had this whole speech prepared. It was like an infomercial for Virginia wrestling. It was going to be nonstop talk about the the three ACC chance we have returning, the the team on paper, and all these good things. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to bag that. And I got kind of convicted while I was sitting there listening to the other coaches. Is I don't think that shows anything about our team and who we are. All it is is a bunch of list of stats. You can pull up your smartphone and find that. So I wanted to do something else. So I stood up and said, guys, I, I'm going to shoot from the hip here. I want, to, I want to share with you what I think is a much deeper look into our program and our philosophy and who we are, who I am as a coach and what we're trying to aspire to be as a program. And I told them this story. I told them the story about William Borden, who was a missionary uh, who lived in the late 1800s and died in 1910. And the background behind William Borden, for those who don't know, was he was... Um, his family, he came from a very rich, well-off family. That family was worth hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars in today's dollars. It was translated over, you know, to, to what the money would be like today. Uh, so he was filthy rich. And his life was kind of laid out for him by his dad of what his dad wanted him to do when he got out of college. And instead of listening to that or the pressures of the world or what he's supposed to do, he followed his passion and his conviction, and that was to be a missionary and serve the Lord and sharing the gospel across the, literally across the world. And he left Yale. He was an undergraduate at Yale. He ended up going, uh, <clears throat> traveling through Africa, the Middle East, and trying to get to Asia. And through the course of that journey, contracted a disease and died at the age of 24. Amazing guy. When they found his journal and his Bible, soon after his death, there was three words written in that, in that Bible. And it was no retreat, no reserve, and no regrets. And the first one, no retreat, coincided with a time where his father told him, listen, you know, the $100 million that, that this family can give you, this job, this family, this support this family can give you, it's all going to go away if you don't listen to me and you go and, and, and become a missionary. And it said, no retreat, meaning I'm doing it anyway. I, I've got this conviction, this passion in my heart, and I'm moving forward on it, regardless of, of how crazy everybody thinks it is. The next one, no reserve, coincided with a date where he found out that his dad did take his money and he had nothing. He literally went from being a millionaire to nothing in one in a short amount of time, and he had nothing left. He was running on fumes that said no reserves. No, I'm 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 going to battle. I'm going to keep pushing forward in my life's work. And the last one was no regrets, and that that inscription in the Bible was coincided with the day he died. And think about this: a guy on his deathbed who contracted a disease doing missions work that he, the world told him not to do, that his family told him not to do anyway, and instead of feeling bad about that or I should have, would have, could have, do something else, he writes no regrets. And I just felt like I shared with these guys, I said, guys, that's who I want to be. Uh, you know, that, that's the type of guy I want to be. That's the type of husband I want to be. That's the type of leader I want to be. What an amazing, what an amazing story this is. And, and, and that's why, most importantly, that's who I want our guys to be. I want him to be, to, to be so passionate and, and, and driven in what their goals are and that path that's being laid out for them, that no matter what the world says, they're going to go no retreat. No matter how much they feel like they're tired and exhausted, they're going to go no reserve. Um, and, and no matter what happens on the end result, they're going to say no regrets at the end of the career here. They'll say, I won't have one regret. And a guy who exemplified that unbelievably well is a guy named Matt Schneider. And this is a letter he wrote me 
from medical school. It's dated August 11, 2014. It says, Coach G, I started medical school today. Because of that, I wanted to thank you for everything that you've done for me to help me get to where I am today. You completely invested yourself in my development as a wrestler, as a student, as the man I was created to be. You spent so many hours studying film, teaching me, even though I was often too stubborn to listen, worrying and praying for me, all for me. And what's amazing, however, is that over the past five years, I've watched you do this not just for me, but for 30 other guys at a time, including your own staff. Your actions have always been a focus on everyone else but yourself. By both of us as an example, and by word, you've helped me to get to where I am today. Um, it talks about fighting hard for him, and it says, you know, you show me what it takes to live, blah, blah, blah. It says, I hope that with Christ as my foundation, I will be able to selfishly and servantly serve my wife, my children, my family, and those who I'm called to serve in my profession every day. And do it just as you show me. I love you, Coach Sniz. Um, the reason why I share that letter with you is because this is a young man who came into our program and his life was completely transformed by the culture and the leadership in this program. And I'm so darn proud to brag about it because this is a guy that by the world standards failed. He didn't reach his goals athletically. He wasn't a national champion. He was an ACC champion. He had a great career. But the goals that he wrote down on paper that he wanted to get, he didn't get to. So the world would say that he was a failure. But the reality is he was an absolute success. And how I ended my speech with, with the VAF, I said, we have to be a group of people that rightly understands that your success is not defined in a list and a stat sheet or a list of a sum of your accomplishments, but it's the person you become, the man you become in the process of pursuing those accomplishments. That's what success is. And that's what we want our team to do, and that's why Virginia. Thank you.